So if you're like me, you probably found the beat on the brat boxing quest in Cyberpunk to be frustratingly difficult. In fact, on my first playthrough, I gave up after beating my head against a particularly beefy brick wall named Razor. And that was hot on the heels of getting my skull bashed in repeatedly by Rhino, and that was... Anyway, today we'll be looking at a build that'll let you not just beat the fights, but utterly dominate them. And everyone else in Cyberpunk too, by the way. Don't believe me? Well, get comfy on the couch and welcome to the hangout. Let's jump into this, shall we? Now, like any proper overpowered build, we're of course going to be playing on very hard. Your life path again doesn't matter. And of course, we can't forget our glorious beard. But as far as your starting attributes, there's a couple you're going to want to target. Number one, you're going to want body. That's probably pretty obvious. Number two, we're going to go into reflexes. More on that later. And then a dark horse you may not have expected. We're going to be putting a few points into cool. And I'll show you exactly why in just a second. I tell ya, you gotta love how Cyberpunk still lets you look just absurdly ridiculous when you wear the stuff they give you. Like, thank god for the outfit system, but man, we've got like business up top, party down below, and I don't even know what this is. Now when you start your build, you're gonna want to start targeting body, and specifically street brawler perks first. You're going to want to go for things like Crushing Blow, which gives you better strong attacks, which are going to be your best friend, and I'm about to show you why. You're going to definitely want Dazed, which gives you attacks with blunt weapons, which, yes, that includes your fists. Have a 30% chance to apply stun if you max this out. And we're going to go for a lot more over here, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. Now, even though we've barely started our build, the twins are not going to be a problem. Um, they're pretty much not gonna be hard ever, but I use this time to show you that strong attacks are going to be your friend. This is definitely a mechanic you want to use because it helps you manage stamina. You see, when enemies come at you and they're going to attack you and you're low on stamina, if you strong attack them, they're either going to turtle up or they're going to get thwapped right in their face. And yeah, I just said thwapped. But as you can see, this is um, making managing our stamina really easy. And we just strong attacked our way through the entire fight. Again, twins, not hard. But the strong attack mechanic is one you definitely want to know. This will become very relevant later. And this is why we're checking into better strong attacks under Street Brawler. Now, the first milestone we're working towards in our build is going to be 20 street cred. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. It's because the gorilla arms, an obvious and important part of our build, unlock at 20 street cred. And if you want to be able to buy them at the Ripper Dock, that's going to be a necessity. Now, you might notice, though, that I'm sprinting everywhere, and you might say, Havoc, there are more efficient ways to travel Night City. And you're correct, but also... That's kind of not how this build works. You see, there's a couple things we're gonna wanna level. That would be athletics and street brawler. Street brawler's simple enough, just punch everything to death or beat them to death with a baseball bat and you're going to be fine. But athletics is a little bit trickier to level. One of the easiest ways to do it, sort of passively, is by sprinting your way everywhere you want to go. As you can see, we just sprinted for a while and athletics gave us 75 XP. There is another option and it's going to depend on whether or not you want your character to just sit there looking like a doofus for a few hours, but if you want to just grind XP rather than sprint everywhere, you can try the option where you jump and punch the air like an absolute imbecile. The downside being that if you do this in the vicinity of any of the pedestrians, some random red-haired lady may want to pick a fight with you, and um, the good news is that you can apparently just vaporize her with your fists. Okay, well, um, no bugs. They're very proud of the condition of the game. But yeah, so jumping and punching the air is going to be a way you can also, if you want to just farm out XP for athletics, that will also do it. But as the build progresses, you might notice that we're up to seven cool, and this is one of the things that I think might go under the radar for a lot of people who are looking for a punching build. But if you go to cool, one of the perks is that you get assassin. Deal 15% more damage to human enemies. All of your boxing enemies are human enemies. So this is going to be a straight 15% damage buff to those fights. And that's all you need in cool. Outside that, we're not going to be doing anything else in this particular skill tree. But as we progress, we're filling out a lot more of our street brawler perks, such as increased damage with blunt weapons against enemies affected by stun by 50%, which you might notice why we went into dazed so early, is because this is how you stack abilities. Better chance to stun, more damage when they are stunned. We're also doing increased damage from combo attacks, so that when we're comboing on people, we're doing more damage that way as well. Now, after just a little bit of progression, it actually is possible to beat most of these fights with 
a fairly low level build. As you can see, we're level 13 and we're able to take on the champion of Glen. But just so that you can see, we've started going into some cyberware. This is not going to be our final build, but this is going to highlight a few things that we are definitely going to want. We have our gorilla arms finally, which gives us a massive buff to our punching damage. But most importantly, you could argue with this build is we have the Sandefistan or Sandefistan. I don't I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not going to lie. Colloquially, it's called the Sandy. So we have Sandy on our side now. We also have a few other things like subdermal armor. That's going to make it so we take less damage. Synth lungs gives us 10% stamina regen, which is very good. And there's a few other pieces of cyberware we have, but this is not going to be our final cyberware build. So we'll show that off more later. Now it's time for lesson number two, and that would be that outside of the twins fight and the championship fight, when you start these fights, you can go up, say you're ready, and go behind them with your fists already up, ready to give a quick sucker punch or two to start the fight off. Oh boo-hoo, now I feel really bad. Bad llama. As you can see, we already have him very staggered. He's very disoriented. We have, oh man, he's on the ground and everything. We are... To say we're dominating is uh, putting it mildly. Uh, ooh, yeah, this is this is embarrassing, dude. Your pregnant girlfriend is right there watching this, and this is why she's going to break up with you. And <laughs> he just now got alerted. But yeah, as you can tell, we now have a Sandy, which means we can also slow down time and run circles around him, making him look even dumber. Sir, I'm going to be taking your golden car, and there's just nothing you can do about this. So yeah, uh, it's not hard to stun lock people. And I think you can start to see why I said that it's actually not too tough to beat most of these fights even at a low level. We're level 13. He's a red skull to us, but we still easily dunked on him. Oh, but wait, there is so much more. Now I bring you to our fight with Oda because I want you to see that this build works in real life, not only in the ring. You see, as we get to level 27-ish, so mid-level, and we get to, well, I maxed out on street cred. But once you get a good amount of street cred, you can start getting things like legendary subdermal armor, which gives us a lot more armor. Legendary gorilla arms. Micro vibration generator for better damage. Dense marrow for even more better damage. Because that's how you say that, right? Nano relay is giving us better time on our Sandy. But shout out to the stream, because when we were making this build on stream, someone told me about the fingers Sandy. If you don't know, Fingers is one of the Ripper docks that you've come across in the storyline. And if you don't beat him to a bloody pulp, he'll let you buy this off of him, which is the qu quaint? 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 It's the Q Sandy, because I can't pronounce anything in this game, apparently. But it's Mark IV Legendary, which slows time to 25% for 12 seconds, increases our damage dealt by 15% when it's active, and our crit chance is better when it's active. And on stream, they also recommended that we get these, the heat sinks, which means our cooldown for it is reduced by, with the uncommon edition, two and a half seconds. You can load three of these up for a total of seven and a half seconds of time reduction, which is over half of our cooldown. This can be better too, but we'll get more into that at a later time. And we've been going even farther into body. As you can tell, it's now level 19. We have 16 reflexes. By the way, if you're wondering how many reflexes you're gonna need to be able to use all of this, you're not gonna need anything more than 16. Though if you wanna go higher, I mean, the world is your oyster, go for it. And you can see we've been teching into a whole lot of body perks. Athletics definitely helps you and Street Brawler, but again, don't go for blocking things, because if you're blocking, you're messing up. So let's get Oda in here, shall we? And lightsaber arms, and our fight. Now the first thing we do is pop the Sandy, and we just go to town on the dude. Like, that's pretty much all there is to it. As you can tell, he can't keep up with us. Uh, we, before the Sandy runs out, we are uh, less than 20% health. Yeah, so that's pretty good, I would say. Where did he go? Ah, I see him bleeding over in a corner. How cute. Now, as you can see, our Sandy's already back up and running, so we can just pop it, come over here, and uh, beat the rest of the pulp out of the man. And we beat Oda. So that wasn't that hard. Now we've come to the champion here of Arroyo, but there's one last thing I wanna show you about the build before we just finish off these fights. That would be that if you go to your arms, you can actually equip some mods to your arms if you weren't aware of that. And there's two in particular you're gonna wanna put on your gorilla arms. Number one, animal knuckles. They can cause bleeding on successful hits. 
That's pretty good, and if you're wondering, you can buy them from the Ripper Dock over here in Charter Hill. And the other thing, if you want a damage buff, is going to be the Black Market Battery. As you can see, increase max charge and charge damage by 100%. Best I can tell, that's just going to help increase your damage output. And the Black Market Battery is purchased up in the Kabuki area. It's one of these, I don't remember which one of these Ripper Docks it is, but one of these Ripper Docks sells the Black Market Battery. Now, like we said before, we can go up, start the fight, and then circle around behind for a few cheap shots. And you can tell that, uh, yeah, our build might be working pretty well right now, being, uh, yeah, we already won. Now, this fight throws in the added surprise, or the maybe totally predicted surprise, of all of these thugs coming after us. Why we fought in an isolated area where, well, let's just say we're playing an away game right now. But the good news is that we're so strong that these guys don't really pose a threat to us at all. This will not be that difficult. We already beat the fighter once, and it's not going to be that hard to beat him again. Oh no, he hit me with a knife. But whatever shall I do except for not care at all. Maybe it's the subdermal armor, I don't know. But yeah, uh, beat him twice, or at least momentarily will have beaten him twice. And I got a fun free sniper rifle from it too. So that wasn't a problem for our build. How about Rhino? Now this is Rhino, and I'll be honest, this is the girl that made me nearly quit these fights on my first playthrough. I took so long trying to beat her, but let's see how our build does. And like I said before, we can start, get behind her, and... Sucker Punch it is. And as you can see, uh, she's already not doing so hot, but now that we have our Sandy activated... Ooh, that was a quick fight. Oh, that's awkward. I am weeping, like you don't even understand. I am weeping internally right now for how long I spent on this fight in my first playthrough. And we beat her in... Cyphix, you're gonna have to let me know. Was that five seconds? Tell me the actual runtime of us beating her. I cannot believe how much I beat my head against a wall, and this build, as you can see, is stupidly overpowered. Which I love, by the way. But we have one more fight, so let's go take on the champion. Now, this is Razor, who just did a cool power move if you didn't see. He was standing on the chair just to intimidate and then slid down like a... Slick son of a gun, but this guy is, um, there's one defining attribute about him, and that is that he is an absurd tank. He has so much health. Well, let's see what our build can do. Let the fight begin. Alright, so we got a stun off on him. That's a good start. And as you can see, we got another stun off on him. And oh, another stun off on him, and, uh, oh, look, another stun off on him and he's stunned again and oh this is oh this is sad oh oh he's just continually stunned we have him stun locked right at his chair that chair is supposed to represent rest for you and yet it's representing you getting the crap beat out of you oh you're a champion how i didn't even need the sandy for this and we beat him oh boy yeah so, I'd say that that's probably a pretty successful run. We didn't even need what I thought was the most important thing in this build, the Sandy. Um, so yeah, let me just show you in case anyone's wondering, settings, gameplay, very hard. We just made the beat on the brats very easy. And if you think this was impressive, the next step is to take this build and run the toughest gauntlet that Cyberpunk has to offer. The Don't Fear the Reaper ending. So if you want to see when that's available, you should most definitely subscribe. And drop a like if you want to see more Cyberpunk content. I'm thinking maybe even testing viewer submitted builds. Who knows? Anyways, if you want to see the ending I'm talking about in the meantime, then you should click here to see it with my Quasar build. I'll catch you for the next hangout, everybody. Have a great day, and goodbye.